was really wonderful to hear all of you read. Um, I kind of forgot what I was going to say. I got so caught up in the reading. So um, I had an introduction, but I, I don't have a mind either right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So what I'm going to say is I, I'm, I've picked poems um, uh, from over 30 years. Um, and I'm going to read an early poem. Each poem has some relationship to Gothic themes because um, my class has taught me so much this semester I wanted to give them a little gift back. So for uh, a number of the students, we they read pieces of their project earlier tonight and they really freaked me out. These people <laughs> freaked out children. <laughs> And uh, I have been saying to a few of them, well, if it's creepy, lean into it, you know, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a poem in which I went for it. Um, it and you'll, you'll understand why it was uh, based on something that was going on in my neighborhood a number of years ago. The animated woman in the mirror. And let me say there are two characters, but then maybe there's a third. The animated woman in the mirror. You wake up too soon to grayness. Not the absence of light, not the absence of color. An echo of grayness, like sound above sleep that your senses rise up to. Footfall on stair tread. Thumbnail on doorknob. Stranger's breath. Dark face. Eyes like double January moons. Distant. Cold. His voice clicks commands. I'll kill you if you scream. Turn on the light. You click on the switch. The lamp fires light like a bullet backed up in the chamber, flies down the barrel, potent with flame. He clicks back the blued hammer. His gun is the only real thing in your room. Stuck in the edge of the mirror's frame is a woman's head. Stuck in its center, her torso. Caught by a lens larger than the room. That hammer click a shutter, which shifts the scope of your life. Take it off, doll. Hands in the mirror lift flannel over knees, hips, breasts, shoulders, head. An animation of a woman undressing in a mirror. You watch her with the stranger. In the mirror, the gun sight flicks the woman's upper lip. Suck on this. She laps her lips over her teeth, leans into the barrel. Her mouth slides toward the chamber, back to the tip. Her eyes, looking out from the mirror, see nothing, while you, merely watching, curl your tongue away from the barrel's blue cold. You want the mirror to stop its movie, and the stranger in this theater that once was your room to leave before he speaks again. Tell me to do it. The female animation in the mirror lifts her mouth from the barrel. What? A dark glove enters the mirror like a rocket exploding on her cheek. She sobs. Her tears are salt in your mouth, in the wounds of your eyes. You shut them. Better blind than a witness to a victim you don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so it's a way to exercise fear, right? Is to say the worst. The worst you can imagine, or the worst that is, or the worst that was. And I really think that's what writing does, but also the best. Mm -hmm. There's no best in this reading, unfortunately. <laughs> but in my book, there's, there's a lot of best in the book, not in the reading. So I'm writing a sequence of sonnets um, that uh, uh, are in the, uh, it, it, they're sonnets, but there's a very difficult thing for me to do because I'm a poet. 
Um, and that is I have to maintain a very close third person voice in mm. these sides. It's killing me. <laughs> so uh, there's a bunch of them, but I'm just going to read one. Um, one of the things we talked about in uh, Gothic is ab the abject, how something is ashamed and demeaned, frequently women in the, in the Gothic, but not only. Everybody can be abject. Mm -hmm. So in this, there, it's sort of maybe a little abject. Um, there's an IED, that's an unified, unidentified explosive device. There's an M9, there's a big sucker uh, pistol weapon. Kevlar, the armor. And, and then a word that some of you will know and maybe not others, but you'll get it. Okay, so um, here we go. It takes place in Iraq, and the speaker is a female Air Force captain who's a physician. Damn it. Where is it? Not the airy penoir at home, but her M9, safety on, as she sleeps. Shrug on camis, lace-up boots, creeps her out, she has to dress to pee. Kevlar, too. Strapping on her weapon, bugs her bladder. Two blocks to the toilet trailer by flashlight. Leaks, a risk, mortar blasts, or worse. She keeps the whistle close, although the webinar on female safety claimed your average grunt more rape prone than your airman. Riddle, a stiffy. How's it like an IED? Both make you neat. Dirty fluorescence, bleach, mold, pee, like blunt force trauma. Two sinks, two stalls, dumpster sticky. There's a new twist for the riddle. The punchline still neat. So I was reading military blogs and found out a lot about the bathrooms for women, <laughs> <laughs> which were initially uh, about the size of a dumpster, and later much larger, and they called them Cadillacs. <laughs> okay, so, right, so this is sort of like the uncanny, maybe. Um, you know how precious babies are. Okay, we, we have actually this preciousness um, referred to today. And, um, and yet, gorgeous little thing and everything going on inside its body. Yeah. So here it is, fresh out. Out where it's spacious, she begins to unfurl. Air, unfiltered light and milk, new mediums for growth. Of course she will flourish, fatten, dimple. They can't see the falling off. The burned out cells, the faulty fissions, Skin seals off, seals in the organs, muscles, bone, the flood of lymph and blood, the stately coils of gut and surge of brain. Nothing is preserved. Odd infinitum, the minor purging, presses on. She gains an inch. They cut her hair, her nails. <laughs> Down, down. There's one more. Let me see how down this is. Oh, no. This is, this is a little lighter. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What was I thinking of? Okay. So, um, it's, it's an experience everybody has had. You, you look in the mirror, and you don't know who it is. <laughs> it's you. It's you. And it, maybe, it's not, maybe it's not what you wanted to see at the moment, or maybe the face doesn't match the inner moment. But often, it's just because it's a glance, and you didn't mean to look in the mirror, and then, what's there? So, is it you? Is it you who's to be my bright one, I ask, lost in reflection? Seeing the figure there, but who? Confidant. Like any angel, 
you respond. The gray cat in the corner tremble. The gray cat in the corner trembles through the hunt of a dream, too close to what she seeks. She wakes. My eyes blink open to my eyes in the mirror, myself in a nightgown, hairbrush in hand.